Hey, uh, Council Cruz, could you grab me one of those, please? Councilors, I hear, hereby call the Finance Committee meeting to order for May 30th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Councilors, before we get into the agenda item, just a couple uh, pieces of information uh, that we should uh, bear in mind going forward. Uh, first of all, we had a, a really uh, great event here yesterday for Memorial Day. Um, and again, it was in honor of, of a, a great city employee, uh, Mr. Feroli, Marty Feroli. Uh, so I do want to thank the mayor, I want to thank Dave Farrell and everybody that participated. More importantly, I want to thank the men and women, uh, those that, that served, like Councilor Staninsky and Councilor Rodriguez, and those that didn't come back. And uh, that's why we're here. We have the ability to do this democratic. So, uh, so thank you. Um, Councilors, also please re be reminded again, uh, Brockton Community Access Cable Live is not working again tonight. I have reiterated to them that we need to have it live for next week's budget hearings, and they are working diligently on that. It is being taped, it will be shown, however, it is not live this evening. Um, Councilors also, I know I, I, I was up there, Councilor Lally, I know Councilor Borregat, I'm sure some of the others, uh, the showcase at Brockton High, uh, the uh, Brockton Kids Count Showcase, which was very, very well attended. Um, Senator Brady, um, State Rep um, Cronin, State Rep um, uh, Jerry Cassidy was there as well, and I'm sure Councilor uh, State Rep Dubois was there, but um, uh, we couldn't be there, all of us, because of this uh, tonight. Um, but Senator Brady wanted to uh, bring to the attention, and uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with yesterday, uh, even though this wasn't a person, um, this, this dog, canine dog, Sergeant Chica, that passed away, uh, was actually awake tonight in the city of Brockton, owned by a Brockton firefighter, a Marine, uh, and the canine saved many, many, many soldiers, American soldiers in the Middle East. So I wanted to bring that to your attention because I thought it was, uh, when Michael told me, I thought it'd be appropriate to bring that to your attention. Uh, and also, again, the budget books, and thanks to the mayor, and of course, Mr. Conn, we have our city budget books, uh, our budget is going to be next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, June 7, 8, 9. We will be having a special on June 12th, which will be a Monday night, because we are in summer session, um, to ratify it, hopefully ratify it. Mr. Conan is aware that the school budget books are being finalized and compiled. I am respectfully asking they be delivered to the council, uh, each individual councilor, so that they're not just left here in the chambers, because we will not be back here till the budget next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, Councilors, we're going to go into the agenda, and I am going to ask that we take a couple of items out of order. I do know that we have uh, a lengthy agenda tonight, and of course, uh, number 10 is going to be, uh, number 10 on the agenda is going to take some time. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, if we could go into agenda item number one, please. Appointment of Marlene Amidi of Brockton to the Brockton Cultural Council for a six-year term. Invited Marlene Amidi. Is Amidi here? Let's entertain a motion on this. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion made properly seconded. Favor recommendation back to full council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Favor recommendation back to full council. Number two, please. Appointment of Frederick McDermott of Brockton to the Board of Elections Commission to replace William Prebaskis. I apologize if I said that wrong. For a four-year term, invited Frederick McDermott. Mr. McDermott, how are you tonight? I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Do you have a, a statement for the committee? Yeah, it's nice to be here. I'm looking forward to uh, the election commission. Should be fun and interesting and uh, <laughs> worthwhile. Move for a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion made properly. Second, a favorable recommendation. Back to the council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. Favorable recommendation. Back to full council. Uh, number three, please. Reappointment of David Lynch of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited David Lynch. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I've received a phone call from Mr. Lynch. He was uh, detained. Uh, he will not make it here early, for sure. May not make it at all, but he appreciates the fact that he's had a good three years and he'd like to come back again for another three years. And with that, I would make a motion for a favorable. Second. 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 Council Stanisky, thank you for that information. The motion was made, it was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Please raise your hand if you favor that. Please raise your hand if you oppose that. Motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to full council. Councils, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion. I'd like to take agenda item 14 out of order. Could I have a motion, please? Make a motion. Council to take made that motion, seconded by Council Cruz. Motion made. You did make it, right, Council Lally? Yes. I, all right. I thought you did. Uh, motion was made properly, seconded to take 14 out of order. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. That motion carries. Madam Clerk, number 14, please. Order that the city hereby accepts as a grant and gift from Jeffrey J. Donahue Jr. of four dog houses pursuant to the Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half, to be donated to four residents of the city as deemed necessary by the Brockton Animal Control Department. The mayor is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to 
effectuate such gift. In invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Thomas Tachilla, Supervisor Animal Control. Uh, also, we have the actual uh, individual, Mr. Donahue, that actually built these. Uh, he's not on the list as an invited guest, but he is a friend of the council and the finance committee, and I'm going to ask him to come forward as well, and I want to thank him on behalf of the finance committee and the city. Uh, Mr. Tuchelis, good evening. How are you? Good evening, councilors. Uh, this donation, if accepted by the council, would be used to uh, help city residents that do, uh, do not have the financial resources to provide adequate shelter for their pets. Mr. Donahue, could you, could you come forward, please? Uh, on behalf of the Finance Committee vis-a-vis -vis the City Council, we want to thank you. I know this is a project. I, I know your mom. I grew up with your mom. And uh, I want to thank you uh, for this generous, generous gift. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Donahue? Council Bonds. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, how many dog houses will, will be constructed? Sorry, uh, good evening, Mr. President. Um, there were four dog houses constructed. Okay, and what's the process for residents, as you said, Mr. Chellis, about um, the eligibility, I guess, of residents to qualify, or how do they get them? Um, if somebody were to uh, contact us by phone, or if we responded to a call for service, um, that would be the contact that we've been made to uh, see if we could help the resident in need. So is it left to you and your officer's discretion or is there an application process, I guess is what I'm asking? It, it would be left to the officer's discretion. Okay, so if the, if the conditions are such that they find that the animal needs shelter outside or, or whatever, that they would make that recommendation and? Yes, yeah, sometimes we get complaint that animals are kept outside without shelter or without proper shelter and by mm -hmm. making contact with the animal owner, we find out they may not have the financial resources in place to uh, mm -hmm. provide for the animal proper shelter we would bring that up to them. Okay, all right, great. <coughs> thank you, and thank you, Ms. Donahue, sir. <coughs> thank thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Donahue, this is a, a project for the Eagle Scouts, is that correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. And, and what pack are you affiliated with? Um, from Troop 113 out of Rockland, Massachusetts. Rockland, Mass? Yes. Well, thanks for coming to the City of Champions. Thank you, thank we you, appreciate man. that. Any other questions for Mr. Donahue? Motion to recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion Council. made, properly seconded. Favor recommendation back to full council. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, it's unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you, Councilors. Councilors, in light of the situation that we're going to be having, um, I think a pretty in-depth conversation, and, and I thank everybody that's in attendance tonight. Uh, typical uh, protocols, we um, do all our orders first in the Finance Committee, and then we go to the resolves. However, uh, the petitioner on this, uh, Councillor Beauregard, has indicated the two resolves, which are 17 and 18, are relatively straightforward. They're not going to be a lengthy conversation. I think it would be appropriate, Councillors, to, uh, to bring forward those individuals. Anybody object to that? Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a motion on that, then, Council Beauregard. <coughs> uh, make a mo favorable uh, recommendation second, to move second. this forward. Second. Uh, so, uh, agenda item 17 uh, properly <coughs> has been uh, motioned to take it out of order. And also 18, I, I believe, too, Council. Yes. Um, We'll take those out of order. It's been properly second. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that carries. Uh, Madam Clerk, 17, please. Resolved to invite Ms. Lynn Smith, the organizer for the June 11, 2017 event, Campello 100 years ago, to inform the residents and the City Council about this community event celebrating the history of the south side of Brockton, invited Lynn Smith, Development Manager, Old Colony Elders for Services. Ms. Smith, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Good evening, here. City Councilors, Finance Committee members. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> To the audience here and the audience listening at home, I'm Lynn Smith. I'm the treasurer of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. Over the past few years, I've been one of the volunteers in Brockton who are building community, one neighborhood at a time, one program at a time. And I have some of my colleagues with me here in the audience. And if you could stand up, my volunteers, my trusty band of uh, volunteers. So we're the folks that have brought you the outdoor movies, the Friday night flicks. We brought you the little free libraries, six of them and two more are coming. We brought you community dining out, flag day picnics, the holiday history lantern walks, the ice cream Sunday social, the public reading of Frederick Douglass's 4th of July speech. The Keith Park Neighborhood Association is sort of the five-year-old granddaddy of some of the other neighborhood associations now flourishing in Brockton, and we were delighted to help them get their start as well. 
Uh, first, I just want to um, thank Council President Sullivan and the entire council for recognizing the work of our volunteers at the recent uh, Brockton First Foundation celebration. The citation from the city council was truly appreciated and it inspires us all to do more. And that's what we hear about tonight. Do you know that in 1917, the world literacy rate was only 23%, and today it's 86%. In 1917, it took five days to travel from Boston to London. Today, it takes about eight hours. In 1917, the average wage was about 22 cents an hour, and today it's about $22 an hour. Maybe the only thing that hasn't changed is that in 1917, only 8% of the homes had telephone landlines. Mm -hmm. And with yeah. cell phones today, we're probably about the same at this point. <laughs> so what was Brockton like in 1917, 100 years ago? What can we learn from the people who moved here and lived here and worked here? What challenges did they face? How are they the same? How are they different than the folks who live here today? What would those 1917 residents and organizations say to the people who live in Brockton today? And that's what our Campello pop-up village of 1917 is all about. So on Sunday, the 11th of June, from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, rain or shine, the Brockton Historical Society has partnered with the Keith, Neighborhood, Keith Park Neighborhood Association, and we've been inspired by Henry Ford's philosophy of hands-on learning. So come and visit our one day Campello Village of 1917. You know, we were inspired by Keith Park, the park that was given to the city by George E. Keith, and thanks to the good work of Rob May and his team in the planning department, and with the support of the neighborhood and members of the Neighborhood Association, the park received a grant and is now undergoing restoration including bringing back the George E. Keith Memorial Fountain. So we wrote a grant application to Mass Humanities, and we were awarded um, that grant from Mass Humanities, so we added that money to very generous donations from Barbour Welting and Churchill Linen and Copeland Toyota and the Metro South Chamber of Commerce and Cressa Credit Union, and the Campello Business Association, and the Brockton Housing Authority, and the Downtown Brockton Business Association, and the Cape Cod Cafe to help us erect our 1917 village. Bruce Benner, a local Campello business owner of Benner's <coughs> Camera Shop, took little three inch by five inch postcards, and we have now blown them up into eight foot by 10 foot backdrops. So we're gonna line the fence at Nelson Playground next to South Middle School with these theatrical backdrops and they will form the basis of our main street. And may I just take this opportunity to thank um, Bruce Benner. You know, my dad used to say it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease and that's because there's a nut loose. <laughs> and Bruce hung in there with me and he made it happen and so we're really grateful for that. So in front of those backdrops, when you come to our visit village, we'll have folks from 1917. The Lithuanians will be there. The Huntington School students of 100 years ago will be there. The silent suffragettes who recently marched in the parade will be there. The Garden Club, the library, the NAACP, and more. Our 1917 villagers will greet our 2017 visitors and share stories with each other. <coughs> So it's a free event, each building will provide an opportunity to learn history, and each building will provide the opportunity to learn about the challenges that our immigrants face then, and what our immigrants and residents face now. Now, there's also gonna be fun, there's gonna be live music, there's gonna be jazz and ragtime and Dixieland and men's chorus. There'll be activities for the kids. They could make a handkerchief doll and a leather bookmark. There'll be food to purchase. Cape Cod Cafe will be there. Lady C and J Soul Food will be there. And so it'll be a fun event as well. Also attending, we have the Lithuanians, the Swedes, the Irish, the Italians, the African Americans, the Haitians, the Cape Verdeans, the Puerto, Rican, Puerto Ricans, uh, the Spanish, all telling their story about coming to America and coming to Campello. So it will be 100 years of the history that has forged our village.
As of today, we have nine backdrops and 22 tents filled with exhibitors to celebrate our community. You know, we do a great job here in Brockton of celebrating culture, and I think this Friday is Italian Flag Day um, at City Hall as well. Noon time. Noon, noon time. So we put the flags up for Greece and for Italy and for Haiti and Cape Verde, but at this event, all of those flags will be in one place. So we're calling it the Campello Cultural Crossroads. And it will be a wonderful celebration. And thanks to the Brockton schools, if it rains, we'll move inside to the South uh, Middle School. Also, everyone who's exhibiting is going to create a history page, 1917 on one side, 2017 on the other. People will pick the history pages up as they go from spot to spot. We'll give them a binder. And so they'll go home with the history of the city in their hands. So mark your calendars for Sunday, June 11th, 12 to 6, Nelson Park, which is next to the South Middle School. Come dressed in 1917 fashion or in clothing that reflects your heritage. You know, Ernest Borgnine, Dom DiMaggio, Ella Fitzgerald, John Connolly, John F. Kennedy, Man of War, and Red Auerbach were all born in 1917. And when you hear those names, it doesn't sound so far away, does it? <laughs> and June 11th is right around the corner as, uh, as well. We have a Facebook page. We have a website. And you know, the most exciting thing about this is Henry Ford had a great boyhood idol, Thomas Edison. They became very good friends, and Edison and Henry Ford and Harvey Firestone and John Burroughs used to go camping together. And on those camping trips, they were followed by the press, and it was a lot of free publicity and free PR for Ford automobiles and Firestone tires. And I'm happy to say that because of the grant that we got for Mass Humanities in the Douglas Garden, and because of this grant, we have been invited to present at the Massachusetts History Conference, which will be held at Holy Cross College in Worcester this year. So we'll be out there promoting Brockton in positive PR at that event. You know, Henry Ford said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success, and we say celebrating community together is the best way to do all three. So we'll see you at the Pop-Up Village on June 11th. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Yes, um, I, I would like to recommend this favorably. Second. 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 Motion made properly. Second. A favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to the council. And then the last one we're going to take out of order would be agenda item, I believe, 18, uh, Madam Clerk. Resolved to invite Ms. Sarah Morris, the coordinator of the newly created Downtown Center for Community Engagement Office, and allow her to present information on the services provided through the center that are available to volunteer-based organizations in the city and to discuss the community gardening program to the city council. Invited Sarah Morris, coordinator of Downtown Center for Community Engagement. Good evening, Ms. Morris. How are you? Good evening. Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here tonight. We thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. Um, thank you to Councilor Bogard for inviting me and for all of you for being here. And hello to some of my Stonehill friends who are here that I didn't know I'd be here. <laughs> um, my name is Sarah Morris, and I'm an AmeriCorps member serving through Campus Compact of Massachusetts with Stonehill College. So what that means is that um, AmeriCorps is a federally funded program and I, I'm hired by Stonehill College to work on their community engagement initiatives. So the newest one that we have going on um, and is really important to the college right now is our Downtown Center for Community Engagement. So that's um, in the Harbor 1U right on Legion Parkway, 68 Legion Parkway. Um, some of you were there at our open house on April 4th, which was a really wonderful event. So we appreciate who, up, who was able to come out to that. Um, so, Councilor Beauregard, Beauregard asked me to come out and just kind of discuss briefly what goes on at the Downtown Center and what the opportunities are for different local groups to engage at that space. Um, so, in the bottom floor, we have four nonprofit, we call it our nonprofit incubation space. So, four groups are operating full time out of that space. They have access to internet, printing, um, you know, computers, phone system. We have a receptionist, and they have access to conference rooms and kind of state of the art um, technologies 
and materials as we update so that, you know, for groups that may not have access to those things, as they kind of start grassroots nonprofits, that we can provide that for them. Um, so right now we have Sabura Inc., which is a Cape Verdean summer camp that's sponsored by a lot of different groups in the city and is really important to some of our kids. Um, they operate full time out of there. Jefferson Awards Foundation does, they recreate community service opportunities nationwide. So if a high school student has a brilliant idea for community service, this organization kind of takes it to the next level and blasts it out nationally. So their regional office is out of that downtown center as well. Um, Community Autism Resources is a Swansea-based group, and they're kind of South Shore branches now in the downtown center, which is great. Um, and then Brockton's Promise, which is a community coalition. They're not a nonprofit, but they just have a lot of different stakeholders, many of whom are involved in this folks group, which is great. Um, they're also operating full-time out of the downtown center. And the upstairs space, we have a bigger boardroom, which is really beautiful, a full-staffed kind of space kitchen. We have three cl uh, classrooms with access to computers, laptops, whiteboards, projectors, all that stuff. So we've been hosting a lot of groups out of there, which is really exciting. Um, the Brockton uh, Summer Meals Program meets there occasionally, different groups from committees from Brockton Public Schools, um, and then College Unbound and Clemente, which are adult education programs, happen out of there at night. So the hours of the space are 9 to 4.30 traditionally, but it's also open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights um, until 8 p.m. So a lot of groups are having board meetings out of there, um, different nonprofits that kind of need that space outside of their homes if they're operating on a smaller budget. Um, that's how they would access that space. So we're really looking at ways to creatively kind of engage with groups downtown and provide this capacity building opportunity for groups that need it and can really benefit from that. So we're really excited to offer that to different groups here um, in Brackton and beyond, but specifically focus Stonehill's effort and engagement downtown in that space. Um, if you're looking for more information about it, you can head to our website, which is Stonehill. Um, edu and go to the community engagement tab and you'll see downtown center for community engagement there's a tab to reserve space if you're looking for using a conference room or a classroom and then there's also um, a tab about partnerships so if you have a group a small nonprofit that is looking to operate full-time out of that there's a um, kind of comprehensive application about the population you serve and if you're mission driven and if that matches up with the downtown <laughs> center's goals and then from there we'll um, take a look at it for the next fiscal year to host new groups in there so really excited it's been going really well um, so we're happy to be here and thanks for having us thank you council yeah. do you have any questions or? i i just wanted to um have you highlight just briefly about the community garden activity mm -hmm. you're doing please yeah, um, so out of that space, there's a community garden network in Brockton that's huge. Again, a lot of people in this room are really involved in it, um, specifically Lynn and Rob May, which is great. Um, so there's different groups of um, community partners that are doing gardening in different pockets around the city. So we have about 25 different garden beds on our map. And basically the community garden network through the downtown center just kind of brings those groups together and says we're doing trainings here. We don't necessarily provide new garden beds around the city, but we kind of support those who already have them through trainings or resources. Um, we have, sometimes we have seeds and compost that we get at discounted rates that we can just help out different groups that already have them. And it's in partnership with the farm at Stonehill and the Greater Brockton Health Alliance. A couple funders come in there. So really excited to kind of support community-based agriculture and um, different groups that are already doing great work in a way that they can build capacity and we can just provide resources for the groups that already have volunteers. So, okay, thank you. I wanted thank to thank you. you for coming this evening. And this is another asset that we have downtown. And I just believe it's gonna move forward with a lot of positives. So thank you again for thank being you. here. And I'd like to motion to hey, uh, second. Uh, hold, uh, hold the motion for a second. Council Bonds. I, I actually think, did you have a question for our Council Lally? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought I saw you raise your hand. I just want to cut the line. Um, yes, uh, Ms. Morris. So you mentioned um, very quickly, actually. I quickly. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, keep, it, keep it quick. About the turnover for the nonprofits and the availability of some of the incuba in incubator space um, over at 68 Legion Parkway. So can you just kind of explain that again? Like, if I, if I know uh, for nonprofit, agency that might be looking for a place or need those services, how, how does that work and when is that space available to a new, I guess, business? Right, so we right now we have four full-time cubicle spaces that are available and we have one drop-in space. Okay. So that drop-in space is available for those that maybe didn't fill out a memorandum of understanding with us within the fiscal year. Okay. We try and open up those spaces on July 1st. Right now we're operating on one-year renewable contracts and that's through the um, link to the application that you would find on the Stonehill website that I mentioned before. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. um, so if a group was interested, they could fill that out. And then um, we have a group of people through the mission division at Stonehill that just vet if it's, you know, the population served is a group that's important to our mission as college and that benefits the most people downtown, what their operating budget is, if this is really like a need for their capacity versus just a convenience, because we really want to serve those groups that need that space. Um, and then from there on, we just vet, you know, who has a renewable contract, who are new partners. We want to get a good mix every year of different missions and kind of focuses of organization. So right now you can see community autism resources is very different than Sabura and the summer camp. So we do try and kind of touch base on lots of different areas. So that's taken into account, but we have a scoring process that will happen. And then by July 1 for that full fiscal year, that group would have access to the space full time. Okay. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Based on what the results, how many applications we have since it's our first year, you know, right now we might only get four and then all of those groups could have space. If right. we had more, it would just depend on, you know, how they meet those goals. Right. I, I think I understand, but I'm just trying to think kind of the aftermath. So if I, if I have a nonprofit and I'm working in there and using the service and then say my business isn't um, deemed renewable, mm -hmm. am I kicked out? So we're trying to kind of get the most bang for our buck in terms of supporting new groups that need access to the space. We're partnering with our center for um, nonprofit management so that they can like fully support those groups as well. So we provide grant writing um, workshops. We provide kind of ways to look at your capacity and board structure, things like that, so that we're not just like, okay, you can't have any of the space anymore, but we've kind of provided them with a toolkit in terms of this incubation piece so that they now have access to marketing, grant writing, all those things so that, you know, they're just more sustainable on their own. It's like, like a mentorship. You give them a little bit of a leg right. up to how to get on their own. Okay. Yeah. Super. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank, and thank you. you. This is a good program. Thanks. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Ms. Morris? Uh, Mr. Cruz. Actually, not a question. I just want to ma uh, make note of the fact that her boss, uh, Fran Dillon, the Vice President of Stonehill College, is here tonight. <laughs> That's true. And I'm not sure that he's here to make her nervous, but I'm sure he is <laughs> making no her idea. nervous. I have no idea. One of my great just, friends. Just wanted to mention that Fran is here tonight, and he does a great job for the people of Brockton. So. He does. It's Thank true. you. Thank you, Council. Ms. Morris, you did an excellent job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very detailed. <laughs> Detain a motion, Council? Yes. Thank you. And I had a motion to move this favorably. Second. Second. Motion made. Uh, properly seconded. Favorable recommendation. Back to full Council. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 18 is favorably recommended back to the full council, Madam Clerk. We're going to go to number four now. Order appropriation of 338500 from the available funds vacant and abandoned building fund to the public property purchase of services demolition for purposes of contributing to the anticipated cost of demol demolition 40 47 West Elm Street. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nasrella, City Solicitor, James Casseri, Superintendent, Public Property. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Good Chairman. Good evening, Councilors. Councilor. I just, uh, as I look at this, number 15 and 16 are very much related to this. I'd make a motion we take 15 and 16 out of order and do the three to get, uh, vote separately, but do those out of order. Second. And answer questions. We may have overlapping questions on 15 and 16. Motion made, I'm going to take number four, and then we're going to go to 15 and 16. Uh, all in favor of uh, taking those out of order, please raise your hand. All opposed, that carries. We'll do 4, 15, 16. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, hello, counselors. Um, there's a little new information that was necessary for me to obtain prior to coming here. As I touched upon the last time we spoke about this matter, I, I informed the council that the bids would not be good forever. And so in talking with Michael Morris, the state procurement laws are that the bids are only good for 45 days. So we're well past the 45 days. So I, had, I got in contact with a low bidder and asked him if he would still be willing to hold that bid in place. And I have an email here from him, and he states in the email that he will honor that quote until June 30th. So after June 30th, that $338,500 quote goes away, and uh, the, the uh, whole thing would have to be rebid again. So just to make the council aware of that. So I'm here to ask that this council considers um, taking $338,500 from the vacant building registry accounts and putting it into my demolition account that's part of my budget so I can remove the building at 47 West Elm Street. And with that, I'll take any questions. Council Bonds, and then followed by Council Farwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so, Mr. Casseri, 
If I remember correctly, when, the, when we were at the, in the Little Theater at Brockton High, um, there was some discussion about the timeliness of some of the uh, previous building inspections that had gone on. And um, at the time, it, it was revealed that there was one that was in fact conducted, I think, in 2009. Is that, that, that was my recollection that, that several folks were notified, I, I guess, at that time that there was a previous one that, that, that was around. Um, and I think I asked for that. And I don't know if anybody else received it. Sometimes I have problems with my city email, but I never received that report. Um, and I didn't know if that was, or I what I don't happened. have that report, and I, I don't recall that you asked. And if you did, I'm sorry that I didn't get that to you. Because so. I think I remember asking, were there any other previous reports to the one that I guess we were focused on now saying how much of a, a, a risk, a safety risk, that an imminent danger that this building was in at this particular point, had it ever happened before with the understanding that right after the fire, you know, everybody kind of understood that this building was in bad shape and needed to come down. And I, I don't know if anybody else remembers kind of that conversation happening, but that there was a previous report that I'd asked uh, for that I didn't receive. So um, I'm just kind of concerned about that particular part of this and what happens after June 30th? So if this fellow or this company, if they don't, or if they have the, the I guess, discretion to honor their original bid or not, what happens if today we vote on this and then we come back and, you know, maybe even on the suspension of the rules or something, vote to release this money, and then he goes up another $100,000? Okay. What, what happens? He can't go up his quote or his quote. Right, but you said that he can only secure this funding, if I understand you correctly, that he can only secure this funding until June 30th. No, he'll honor his quote until June 30th. The quote is $338,500. Right, but we go into summer session, so it's, there are limited meetings and it's not, you know, what, what happens if that, that doesn't happen? Well, what I would suggest is that this council would have to act quickly because we're going into the budget hearing, so I would think that if this was favorable tonight that at next week's meeting you would suspend the rules and and okay that, Can't that, do that Mr. well that's the thing it's not that's what's not going to happen Oops. next week we have our budget hearings we don't have a full council next week we don't come back until the 12th council president said to ratify just the budget it's not even a meeting so i'm just i'm just kind of asking what happens then what happens is that quote's no good anymore and i have to rebid it and the next closest quote to that was $155,000 more, and this company is well aware of what all the other quotes were, so I would anticipate that the fee will, will go up. That would be my anticipation. Okay, so now that actually opens up the door for a, a, some more questions, and I guess it's procedurally, and I'm not sure if this would go to the mayor or to Mr. Condon or through you, Mr. President, procedurally. How would we do that? How, how do we vote to release this money? I mean, right now we're just voting to recommend it favorably, and then we don't the go back in until under, June. Under the charter, I mean, we, we can count, so as you know, we could call a special meeting if need be. Okay. Um, we will be having a, a, a special uh, full city council meeting. It's my intention as president to call it on the 12th okay. relative to the budget. Okay. However, summer session starts for the month of June, and we will meet as the full city council on the fourth Monday at 8 p.m. here in the chamber. Okay. So from a procedural standpoint, there's time. There's ways to do it. Okay. Okay. I was just. It's unfortunate that that last meeting um, didn't take place. So we, this wouldn't be th such an issue. But this well, last it is meeting. what. It, well, we had a meeting canceled on the 15th of February. Yeah, that. That's assuming that we approve it. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I know it. Okay. All right. I'm thank not, you. I'm not assuming anything, Councillor. I'm just here to ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Casiri. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Council Farwell. Thank Followed you. by Council Cruz. Thank you. I, I think my colleagues heard my remarks earlier at the prior meeting where it, in my judgment, this piece of property should be sold, and the new owner should assume the liability for clearing the, the lot if that's what needs to be done. And let's take a. Uh, just a quick history of this building. 2008, there's a fire. 2009, on October 27, 2009, there's an inspection done by FLI Environmental, and they issue a report about possible hazardous materials in the building, including maybe some mercury, um, maybe some asbestos. The building sits there. 
from 2009 until 2015. The interesting thing in 2015 is suddenly this building becomes one of the centerpieces for the urban renewal project. And it's mentioned repeatedly in the downtown urban renewal project. It's mentioned as eligible for rehabilitation. Phase one, 47 West Elm Street rehabilitation. There's a picture in the urban renewal plan, which we approved, by the way. This multi-story building used to be a multi-story office building, but is currently empty and fire damaged. It is proposed to be acquired and renovated into residential apartments that meet housing quality standards. This project will benefit from construction on adjacent land of the L Street tot lot and playground described in the public improvement section of this URP. It's also mentioned as a source of revenue, $54,000 based on the revenue that we would derive from having 40 R dwelling units put into that building. And lastly, it is mentioned as a source of revenue that if it were sold, the budget for the downtown urban renewal project lists $255,820 as potential revenue from this building. Now, either that urban renewal project is all mystery, just numbers thrown together, and the consultant who worked on it with Mr. May never went out to look at the building or we have a problem. Because you can't repeatedly tell me in writing that this building is eligible for rehabilitation and now tell me, no, we've got to spend public funds to the tune of $338,000 and take it down. So in September 2016, Churchill Engineering conducted a full inspection of 47 West Elm Street. I've read the report, and it is noted in the report, quote, reuse of this building is considered remotely possible, although extensive repairs would be required to allow for reoccupancy. In December, Commissioner Kasseri, either he or one of his inspectors went out, and apparently found something that Churchill Engineering didn't that is so catastrophic that now we have to take the building down. I don't know what it was. I haven't heard yet what changed between the Churchill Engineering inspection and the subsequent inspection by the building department. But at any rate, we heard nothing about this in December, nothing about it in January, nothing about it in February. Finally, in March, on the 7th, I went to a real estate meeting and we were urged to turn the building over to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, which we subsequently did on March 13th in council. And then a week later, Councilor Borgard and some others found the notice in the paper that we were advertising an RFP for demolition of the building and the bid documents generated by Mr. Morris indicated that the price could be as high as I think a million five. Um, if you look at all of the information that's been published about this building, you can't tell me that something is so catastrophic, and I keep using that word because this has got to come down, we've got to have the money, we're under the gun, it's got to be done by June 30th. The record doesn't reflect that. And I do not know why there is a reluctance to put that building up for sale and say to a prospective buyer, we don't want to spend $338,000 from the abandoned building fund, we'll sell that building to you for a nominal fee, you assume the liability for it. You assume the cost to do that. That would seem to me the prudent thing to do. Now, I will respect however the council votes. You've heard me say this many different times. There is no vote that divides us. We all come at things from different points of view. But respectfully, I just don't think that's the right thing to do, to take the money out of the abandoned building fund and use it to demolish this building. I think there should be an overt effort to market the building and to say to prospective buyers, this is what you're dealing with. We've got all the reports. They can read all of the reports done by Churchill Engineering and by FLI Engineering so they'd know what they were going into. But I think we ought to make an effort to market that building and have somebody else assume the costs of doing that. And the last thing is, and you know I'm going to be political. Let's take a look at the optics of this. We just lay off teachers, and even though this money isn't coming out of the general fund, we quickly come up with $338,000 to rip down a building. If I were a teacher, I would not exactly feel inspired by the priorities of the city council. 
I wouldn't exactly feel comfortable that I was valued in my position where you lay me off, but boy, you can, at a moment's notice, you can find 338 grand to demolish a building. So again, however the vote goes, I respect every one of you. I will not vote favorably on this. I think the city can do more work to market this building and hopefully have someone else assume the cost of taking it down. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you, Councilor Fowler. Councilor Cruz. Uh, actually, generally my questions were answered. It was about the time frame. If, uh, so if we were to approve this money by late June, as long as the money was approved, he will honor that. I that could quote. get a contract signed, yeah. Thank you. Before June 30th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Cruz. Any other questions? <clears throat> Councilor Rodriguez. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, I know the... Um, that um, the executive director of the BRA is not on the agenda, but I have a question. Since this, this item actually came into our committee, uh, I have a question. I, I was hoping that you'd give me a little leeway so I can ask Any a question. Any objection? Seeing none. Absolutely. I, I would like to comment after, if that's possible. By all means. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, counselors. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, um, yes. you heard from uh, my colleague, Council Farwell, that we actually had come to the uh, real estate committee meeting, and what we were told in that particular committee meeting is that uh, let the city make these properties available to the BRA for redevelopment, and then the city would actually gain some serious one, redevelopment, and, and two, some income from these properties. But as you can tell from the discussion that we've had, uh, it seems that at least this property is actually going to cost the city money. I'm not, okay. I'm not saying that it's coming out of the city's budget, it's, but it's coming out of the city itself. Exactly. So in the tune of 300 and something thousand dollars. Right. Um, let me ask you uh, point blank, um, do we have any prospective buyers for this property? That is requiring this building to come down as urgently as it has to so that we can make this uh, the another empty lot in the city for development. Sure. Um, to answer your question, yes, we do have a pers two perspective offers if the building was down. If the building is down. If the building was down. And with all due respect to Councillor Farwell, um, it is a, we did not know the condition of the building until he went in and, and we didn't know he was, you have to understand, we did not know when we came to real estate <coughs> that the building had, was in the process of being put out to bid. We didn't, Rob May and myself had no knowledge of that. Uh, we were just as surprised as a council uh, when that did come out. And, that, and that's due to probably our fault as departments not speaking with each other and we'll take that weight because you know, the building department, the BRA, and the planning department should be in communications, especially when it's concerned in the urban renewal district. Um, I've had a contractor go in that building and said that your superintendent of buildings is absolutely correct. The trestles on that building are ready to collapse in on each other. Uh, the fifth floor or the fourth floor is on the, the fifth floor is now on the fourth floor. You cannot walk five, he said he couldn't get 10 feet inside the building. Um, I'm not a contractor. I thought the building could be rehabbed. And to be quite honest, at any price, a building can be rehabbed. But this, you're talking millions of dollars to rehab just to get it structurally sound. It's not worth it from what I've been told. Uh, Mr. Jenkinson, you, you did say that there was actually a couple of prospective um, buyers or bidders on the, on the particular property. But one of the things that we had discussed both at the committee meeting and in the council meeting is that that this council we would actually have a couple representatives correct on the on the bidders committee on the what we're calling the advisory group for the bra and we have several calls into council president to talk about that my chairman is here and my vice chairman is here as well <laughs> we are after our june 7th meeting when we have a call into council president to talk about that process yes now, mind you, the, the people who approach me are the same people who are looking at the building as possibly rehabbing it. They said it's not worth rehabbing. In its current condition, it is not worth it. It's too expensive. And they pretty much said that your building, the, your building inspector, the gentleman who does the job, it's his responsibility, is correct 
and condemning that building to come down. It is what it is. Now, let me ask you another question. Um, basically, we're going to spend $338,000 to take down this building. Um, you're saying, from what you're saying from the, uh, the interest that exists out there in terms of, the, of this particular property, is there a possibility that we can recoup the vast majority of this, uh, of this money that we're spending on, uh, on this particular? I would say the range is probably going to be anywhere from 125 to 150, 175. For the piece of land, basically. Piece of land, new construction. That's my opinion. I mean, that's one thing Council uh, Farwell has said is we should aggressively negotiate the sale of the property. You know, so I would suspect, and I'm not an appraiser or a realtor, but I would suspect that's what we'll end up getting back. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Casseri. A uh, point of information, Council. I did receive a call, one call last week from the chair. I took off Friday and Monday, long weekend. Uh, so again, we met weeks ago on this issue. Correct. So uh, again, I, I just want to be clear on that. And uh, the council has to have a collaborative approach on this. Uh, but before Mr. Casseri speaks, as the chair, I, I have a question. Doesn't the ordinance say, and I was on the ordinance committee, that only $250,000 can be spent from the fund per fiscal year of 2017? Attorney Gilday concurred with me on that. Uh, council, I think that the uh, the restriction is $250,000 without action by the council, I think, is it? I don't believe so. The last verbiage of the ordinance? I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but I, 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 thought, the re I thought the restriction was without action by the council. But, but perhaps you're right. You know, I don't have the ordinance in front of me. Go ahead. You have the floor, Mr. Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Kasseri, um, if everything goes well and the council decides to approve the, uh, the funding for the demolition of the building, when do you foresee this uh, monstrosity in the middle of the city coming down? Um, it, it, I, it is $250,000, Councillor, to answer your question. Grand. Yeah. It is capped. It's capped at two fifty. absolutely capped. Right. It doesn't say anything about action and non-action by the council. Uh, I didn't. I'm not reading that. I'm reading it myself right now. Okay, but if the council remembers that. I'll quote it. On June 2016, the city council approved the use of this fund without appropriation in fiscal year 17 by the building commissioner, but restricted that use to 250000 for the year. Correct. But if you would recall, councilors, all the councilors, we were here last March, March 28, 2016, and I asked this council for $455,753.33 from the vacant registry in order to cover the expense of the removal of buildings and the order is right here. And it reads the It's a separate order, Mr. Kassiri. It has nothing to do with what's germane to the fact right now before us. Well, all I'm saying is past precedents. This has been no done. No past precedents. It has this been done by this council. This is a specific order. This is a specific order. This pertains Mr. to- Mr. Rodriguez, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Kasseri, I don't know if you heard my question, but... Uh, I would get in contact with him as soon as I can, and, and I'll have it expedited. I'm probably going to put a fence around the building only as far as the sidewalk goes, because I'm a little concerned that it, even if it's not in imminent danger of collapse, all it would take is one brick falling off the building at an in, inopportune moment. Um, and, and something Council Fowle touched on, my inspectors have all been in this building with me and they wrote a letter and Jim Pluff wrote the letter and they asked if I would read it and they all signed it. Is that okay if I read this letter? It said sometime in mid-December 2016 all four of us, that's me and my three inspectors, discussed the condition of 47 West Elm Street based on the report that was created by Churchill Engineering for the City Brockton Planner. We came to the conclusion that we needed to reevaluate the condition of the building. Subsequently, we visited the premises to personally view the condition of the building. Once the front door was open, we stepped into the lobby of the building, but halted our advance due to the conditions in front of us. It was immediately noticed that the five-story stairwell on the east side of the building had completely collapsed onto itself and was laying on and below the first floor. 
In addition, the condition of the wooden floor in front of us prevented further entry as the subfloor had completely failed, allowing us to see the floor joists sticking up with the subflooring sinking down between the joists. In addition to the apparent physical defects, it was reported by a couple of people, and I was one of them, that they immediately had difficulty breathing due to the air quality within the building. Based upon the report that we received and the in-person evaluation, it was deemed that this building had deteriorated so significantly that demolition would be the only remedy for the dangers that the building presented. While it is never exactly <coughs> known when a building such as this would collapse, it is undeniable that a building left in this condition will collapse. As each day proceeds, the danger increases. For these reasons, we recommended that this building be removed as soon as possible. So then we convened the Board of Survey. The fire chief's here. He will tell you the building has to come down. Churchill Engineering is an engineering company that specializes in this. They're totally a distance interested party. They say the building has to come down. And a city engineer. So the seven people that are work for this city, six of us work for this city in this capacity, four of us are our building officials trained in this subject matter and the only people in this room that are held accountable by, by statute, state statute, tells me that I have to inform this council that that building has to come down. That's my duty. How the council decides is up to the council. I totally respect this council and every member on it. But my duty is to tell you this building can hurt somebody. So meanwhile, I'm gonna fence off the sidewalks and no one's going to be able to go near that building. And hopefully, if this passes, I'll remove that building as soon as I can possibly do it. Well, uh, Mr. Cassieri, I know that, and I'm going to bring I'm going to bring this up, and I, I hope the chairman will um, <clears throat> look the other way. But. Um, this is sometimes what frustrates the daylights out of me in this community, in this city. You know, I, I asked you a question and you proceeded by reading a letter. I wasn't, I wasn't actually debating with you whether or not the building should come down or not come down. As a matter of fact, I favor the building coming down. Okay. But we tend to, in this council room, to appease certain counselors or to go sometimes out of a away from a question to answer a question and not answer the, and, and not answer the question that was actually directed to you. Um, it, it, and this, what ends up happening is that you've got individuals who will support a particular cause but will get ticked off in a sense because I asked you a simple question, when, is this build, when do you foresee this building coming down? And you proceeded by reading a letter to basically convince us that this building needs to come down. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. And, and that I honestly... I answer the question, though, I think, Council. Yeah. I know, but I, I asked you a simple question. Okay. When do I you apologize. foresee this building come down? And you proceeded by reading a letter that, frankly, I think everybody in here believes you and believes the, uh, the fire chief that the building has to come down. I think the discussion is based on, we say, the order says $250,000 to take a building. That, that's what we are allowed to, to spend. And we have to figure out how to spend three hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. I think that's the uh, that's what we need to do. But at the same time, I just want to make sure that you know we, you know, we're all here for a common cause. You know, we're all here to represent our constituencies and the community as best as we possibly can. Um, some of us would prefer to be home and dealing with our own families, but we're here to deal in the business of the city. So you know, just once in a while, when we do ask the questions, it, it, it would actually make sense to kind of address the questions. I apologize. Thank you, Council. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Monahan, followed by Mr. Lally. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, first question is, if we are only allowed to give two hundred fifty thousand dollars, how are we going to get around? that where we can't really give you more than that although you have an order yes and we 11 nothing last year voted 455,000 out of that account okay so we did we did give more than 250,000 and it was for this exact purpose okay um and i think from what everybody else i think you know, council rodriguez and i think from what um you're telling me that you have people in the business agree that this building 
has to come down at this time. Well, as, as Robert Jenkins uh, alluded to, if, if you had unlimited resources, anything could be saved. I kind of look at it like a car when you get in a car accident and you go to get it fixed and the guy tells you it's going to cost more to fix it than it's worth. Who's going to invest four or five million dollars to fix this building is never going to be worth four or five million dollars. It's just simple math on that part. To me, that's how I feel about it. Right, okay. And, uh, I know we're sort of stuck right now where this has to probably come down. If we don't take it down, it's, we could be liable if we tear it from this building. But um, just a little leeway, Mr. Chairman. In the future, when these buildings are damaged, like that one there with a the fire, um, we let that sit. Uh, I would say the owner probably took the insurance money and skedaddled. That's probably what happened, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we need an ordinance or we need some type of enforcement where this doesn't happen in the future because what's happening is they're taking the money, they're running away, they're not paying the taxes, and then we end up with it. Just like the Petronelli building, that's probably close to having to come down. That's a mess too. That's, we, the city, the, what's going on in the city of Brockton is unprecedented in the history of the city of Brockton. We have 560 vacant buildings in this city. The city now owns, I, I can't count them, 12, large commercial buildings that have been vacant and abandoned and neglected for years. So this is something that this, all of us are going to have to learn how to deal with, I think. Um, it's just my opinion. I don't know of any commissioner or counselor that's ever had to deal with, with this. This is a uh, little over the top, all these buildings. I mean, I have a list of them here, buildings that we own that aren't being maintained. Right. And I just thought, I mean, if they're being damaged, I mean, or whatever, I mean, being left this way, I don't know how we as a city are going to be able to handle this tearing them all down if we're going to be stuck, stuck with it, them. It's a problem. It's a big problem. I agree. So I don't know if we, if there's an ordinance or something we can do to, to cover that because, I mean, it's getting, going to be, we're going to be, out, we don't have the money as it is now, but I mean, somewhere down the road, or well, pretty soon, we're going to have to figure out what the heck to do with these. Obviously, these ones that are abandoned that we own, there's not much we can do about now. But I mean, we have to come up with something that if these buildings are damaged, fire, whatever, these owners of the building are going to have to fix them or do something. And I don't know how we're going to go, go about that, but we've got to come up with something. But as of right now, I can understand, it's a possibility to understand Council Fowler that maybe we could try to sell that building. I don't know if we can or not. If it's not, if it doesn't have to come down tomorrow, if something's not going to happen, maybe give it a few months, but I don't know, other than that, we're going to have to, uh, that's going to come down one way or the other, or something's going to have to be done with it. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Council Monaghan. Councilor Lally. Thank you. I, uh, I had one question for Mr. Jenkins, uh, and then a couple of questions for Mr. Kassir. Um, <coughs> in, in your opinion, would we, you know, just in your opinion, is anyone going to be willing to buy this building while it stands? My opinion, no. No? no? And we could sell it while the, we could sell the lot? Yes. All right. That's clear. Yep. And uh, Mr. Kassiri, as the, uh, as the superintendent of public properties, um, you know, your, your judgment is definitely, uh, you know, definitely the, so the expert, you know, the expert testimony here, is it, you know, your, your opinion, just to, just to make sure we're, you know, clear wording on this, the building is unsafe. Correct. The building need, is, your, your opinion is the building needs to come down. Yes, and, and the description of an unsafe building is, if you read it in the um, state mass building codes, fits this building to the T. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Council Lally. Council Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Jenkins, please. Thank you, first of all, for uh, making yourself available. Okay, so we just heard that we have a lot of uh, abandoned buildings here. So I guess um, we need to take a different course of action sure. and become more, how would I say, um, progressive or uh, is solution driven on this situation. But having said that, you mentioned something a little bit about a disconnect. And I just want to mention this this mm -hmm. evening that there was a, uh, what is it, um, the property, the city owns the property, and then after so much time, the city is allowed to do uh, the um, auctions. And that was what, a couple of weeks ago on a Thursday. And uh, prior to that, they announced what properties are available. 
And at that point, I had seen that 47 West Elm Street was apparently up for auction. Now, are you notified of this? And then afterwards, apparently, it was taken away, that it uh, could not be. I wasn't notified, but I did notice also it was on that list. Uh, it was taken off because the council had voted it a surplus and that it was to be um, titled or deeded over to the BRA. I think that's why it was taken off, plus of the fact that there is a process that the building superintendent and the um, procurement officer had went through to have the building demoed. Okay, thank you very much. I just I wanted to learn more about this. So I know we're not the only community with you know a challenge of no. this nature. So I guess we're going to just have to research how they handle uh, how a dilemma of this. Um, you know, I think, how would I say um, this cost? Yes. Superintendent, uh, the building superintendent, Mr. Casseri said this is new ground for the city. Um, we as leaders have to make the decisions on this. Um, it's new. You, it's something we've never had to deal with before. So. We have to come up with, it's our responsibility to come up with solutions. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. Good counsel. Yes. Uh, any counselors that haven't asked questions? And Council Bonds, you have a follow up. I do, yes. Um, I think this might be for Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Kasseri. So, something actually uh, you just said, um, Mr. Jenkins, about um, this being unprecedented and, and all of these other kinds of things. So, I, I, I guess my question is, in light of, I, I guess, the, the rapid fire release of, I guess, old information from uh, Council Fowl just now, kind of putting it all together in one picture instead of, like he said, you know, th this was years of, of information, eight years of information that he put together in, in you know, two minutes. Um, how did the opinion of all of these other experts, as, as you are Mr. Kasseri and, and you are Mr. Jenkins in your um, particular fields, how do those uh, conclusions or bottom lines differ so drastically from the one that we received in March? And in this particular set of information, the one, one of them right before that was in December. So how did, how did that happen is my question. And where was that disconnect? Well, well first of all, build, buildings deteriorate when they're left unattended. So the condition of a building two years ago and the condition of a building now could be totally different especially if, the, if it's open to the weather. As but there was a report in 2009 that deemed that building as unfit as it did in March of 2017. So that's what I'm trying to figure I, out. As, but in December, I think in one of these reports, December of 2016, it said that there's a possibility that this, this could um, be not salvageable, but at least be marketed and, and have some kind of value. And in the urban renewal project, which was just this past year, less than, than you know, calendar year months ago that this building was still in some some kind of condition um, to be considered so that's my question so from December or so even October or so uh, okay. to March that all of a sudden became an issue when it burned down in 2008 or burned up in 2008 and has just been laying dormant well that's kind of why I read that letter from the inspectors when they did the report in October they never entered the building he wouldn't enter the building. Yes, but who entered the building in 2009? Somebody had to have gone, or did they just stand outside and say the building is in, in garbage condition and needs to come down? I don't know who did that report. They did enter the building, I would say, in 2009. Okay, so that's, that's my question. So from, from that time to all of this information, which is, you know, four or five years of nothing and then two years of, I guess, res I'm, I'm going to assume that it was research in, in allowing this building, like Council Farrell said, um, to be one of the, the gemstones of the urban renewal project. But it's not ours. Huh? That's a council's word, not ours. This was not, here's a, the here's a thing, and I can only take a snapshot picture of when the urban renewal plan was done. Uh-huh. We looked at that building from the outside. There was no one going in in any of those buildings. We can only look at the conditions from the outside. And then I think we did a, or Rob May had a study done in November of last year, or October. Mm -hmm. Those are the only information we could actually use. And even then, in that report, if I recall, it even said they did not get inside the building, but there was concerns about the condition of that building. But it, the evaluation, though, was still that it's still valuable. And now that actually makes me a little bit concerned to follow up what he said about what about the other 
particularly identified buildings in that report. Are, is this going to be another issue going forward when we're thinking that we're able to market? And again, we, we were all in that meeting, like kind of thinking that this building could be marketable, even if the ultimate goal was to tear it down. And again, I don't disagree that the building probably at this particular point needs to come down because of the neglect of whomever was at the helm at the time. I get it. But and, and again, I, I think it's just kind of the way that it happened, and that was my concern back at the, in the little theater, how it is happening, and the, the concern that even now we hear there were 12 more buildings at least that could possibly be in the same condition. We won't know until we have a June 30th date before we lose this, this agreement. And another thing, who is this company that, that we're working with? Is there, do they work with the city all the time? Who, who is this construction demolition company? Mr. Kinseri can it's answer a, that, but it's an engineering firm, Churchill Engineering. No, the ones that are demolition. They're American Environmental Inc. This American. Okay. Time. How often do we work with them as a city? I've never worked with them. <coughs> I've only taken down two such buildings <coughs> as this. But in, in the I, I guess I guess I'm asking something that you you, you may not know. Um, in the history of the city and taking down, I mean, this isn't the first building that the city has taken down. So I'm just trying to say, like, do we have a relationship with this particular company um, or something of that nature that? No, it all requires a, a procurement process. It's the low bidder gets the, gets the job. It's di it's different all the time. When I did when we did the garden the building, um, geez, I forget the name of the company, but and then. 121 Main Street was a different company than this one. They bid on it, whoever the low bidder is, they're bonded, we check their references, their references all check out, and they're awarded the bid. And what's it called again, I'm sorry, American who? American Environmental Inc. Okay. And they're out of where? I can try to find out real quick for you, Counselor. I got a lot of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I have an email from him saying that he would honor the, all right, so, where are they from? This is their email. My glasses, I'm getting old too. <laughs> what does it say, does it say their address? Charlie. It's Charles Hughes, I have, Charles an, Hughes. I have an email address, Counselor. Yeah, well, I, I just wanna know what city or town are they from, and where, they, where do they come from? I don't think it actually says, oh yeah, right here. Yep, they're from 18 Canal Street, Holyoke, Holy Mass. Western Mass. <coughs> okay. And this company right now is involved in the, the demo work going on at the casino in Springfield, and they came highly recommended by the city of Springfield. I called them, they love this company, so. Okay, I, I um, okay, I'll, you good, Councilor? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Before thank you, gentlemen. Follow-ups. There's several councilors who want to do follow-ups. Councilor Azak has a question. Um, it's a sort of a question to my colleagues, but if we're still talking about possibly marketing this building, I think we're wasting our time. It's we've heard from all these experts and people in the departments, as well as the fire. You know, said that our fire chief has also said that this is um, this building is deemed unsafe. I'm afraid that we're going to waste more time and this is going to cost us even more money later on and I hope we learn from our history to just get it taken care of and make sure we don't make these mistakes again. So I just, would, I was hoping we could move this forward and get it taken care of. Thank you, Councilor. Um, we do have some of your colleagues that had follow-up questions okay. before we entertain a motion. Councilor Rodriguez, you had a follow-up? Uh, yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, my question is going to go to the uh, city, city solicitor. Council, is any objection? Solicitor's not an invited guest, but he's in the chamber. Any no, he's, he's on the list. Is he? I'm sorry. Yeah, he's on the list. Oh, yeah, right here. Oh, yes, he is. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, I'm d m the question, I actually had an additional question, but something that Council Monaghan just said, I think, kind of prompted me into uh, asking this question. Uh, can the city bring any action against the, uh, against the landowner of that particular property for abandoning the building after collecting insurance money out of it? Well, you know, that, that's, there's a little more complexity to the, to the answer uh, than at face value. First, we have a statute of limitation issues if this happened in 2009. I don't know the dates that uh, the person took the money, absconded with the money. 
<laughs> that would first have to be examined. Then after that, we'd have to examine some, several other legal issues. So I, I wouldn't be prepared at this time to say what type of action we have and what the degree of success would be. But wouldn't it make sense to look into that? Absolutely. Is it possible? More than open to doing that. I think it should be more than open. I mean, if there's a possibility of us recouping some funds from this particular... Well, more than, I mean, open, it's means, not... more than open means I'll do it. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. All right. <clears throat> now, um, in, in, this, in the basically the same line of questions, um, last year, uh, Mr. Solicitor, I had asked you for a list of actions, either actions or litigations for or against the city. Do you recall that question <coughs> from me when I asked you I wanted that, I, that we, uh, me on behalf of the council, would like to see a list of litigations, actions against or for the city of Brockton? Do you recall I re me asking I recall, that? Yes, I recall discussion about that. And you said that you would provide those lists to us. Correct. And it's now harboring somewhere around eight months or so since that stuff happened. I wish you would have reminded me in eight months. Okay. Um, and, and the reason why I'm saying that Again, is I'm more than open or receptive to giving you whatever list we have on outstanding litigation. Yeah, so just so we can have an, so we have an idea. I mean, we're going into the budget season here just to have an idea Absolutely. exactly where we stand financially in the city. I have that list. It's, you know, it's... <clears throat> We is there any way you can kind of, yeah. do you, can you Absolutely. provide that to us again electronically so we can take yes. a look at it and see what it says? Mm -hmm. And when will we find out whether or not you can actually bring some sort of a, a look into the possibility of bringing some actions um, against the, uh, so the I landowner? I would like a week to examine the history of it and uh, some of the legal issues. Then we'll, we could make a determination whether or not it would be viable. So by the time you come back to, uh, for the budget hearings, you might be able well, to have something? Well, I, I think that, and perhaps Councilor Sullivan may have an opinion as to whether or not that should be subject to uh, executive session. Okay. I don't think we should be discussing it in open forums. Okay. No, I'll take talk, that. We'll talk to uh, Legislative Council. I'll take that. You know, uh, thank you, uh, okay. Mr. Solicitor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We have uh, Councilor Yanari with a follow-up, <coughs> and then Councilor Farwell. Not so much a follow-up. First time I've spoken this evening. Oh. But in any case, um, but so much talk, I got confused, Council. Uh, that's, that's quite all right. Quite all right. A lot of people don't listen to me, but that's okay. <coughs> uh, the uh, building commissioner, where did he? Uh, there he is. You mentioned twelve other vacant buildings that the uh, city owns, correct? I kind of threw that number out there. Might okay. Well, I don't want to throw a number out. I want you to make sure that within the next forty-eight hours that we receive a memo coming from you because I want to know where all these other vacant buildings are in this city that are sitting there we're doing nothing with and we should be doing something with. Um, you know, if they've got to go to auction, we got to get them out to auction. You know, we have a person that doesn't, does auctions and he makes himself a pretty good healthy paycheck as well. So if we've got to go that route, then that's the route we're going to go. If we're going to have to do something in the same sense of what we're doing here, then we've got to start to pay attention to it because I don't care how you look at it, how you wrap your head around it, we're still, we're still spending taxpayers' money. And, and Council Fowler is not all wrong. And, and if people are listening, which I'm sure they are, and any city employees that could be laid off, they see us spending $338,000 or $339,000, may say, well, there you go. I lost my job, but you still spent money you had to take down a building. Exactly. We're under an emergency situation. And I also agree with the other comments that have been made. I mean, this building should have been looked at back in 2009 and not, not remedied now in 2017. So hopefully, with the follow-up of uh, what I'm hearing from my good counselor at large, uh, Councilor Rodriguez, with, with the uh, city solicitor, that we're able to do something there to see if we're able to chase this person that sort of like walked away from abandoned building, collected his insurance. He might be driving a nice Lincoln MKC, for all I know, which is a nice vehicle to have. But still, um, we need to get back what, what is due back to us here in, in the city. And, and, we start, and we need to start to pay attention, too, to those other buildings that we have sitting out there. Uh, I'm not too sure here, where I have my head wrapped around this vote this evening. I don't think I'm in favor of it because just of, of everything that's going down with it and too much just hogwash of, of uh, how it was organized, how it was orchestrated, how the BRA knew about it, didn't know about it, this one didn't know about mayor's office. Too much, too much, really, too much. We've got tough times here, and here we are sitting here dealing with this, and we've been dealing with it for an hour. 
we've got to we got to put to the end to it or either just table it and we'll we'll come back to it after after the budget sessions are over but that's my feeling of it so thank you mr thank chairman thank you council council farwell now, just a couple of follow-ups uh mr Caseri. mr churchill richard churchill is a registered professional engineer is it accurate to say that no one in your department is a registered professional engineer correct that's correct what is it in this report that bothered you to the point where you found it necessary to send your people out to basically oversee this work and double check it. What 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 event happened? That no made event you happened. We were just discussing it, and we decided we should go visit it. So, so we so read the report. I actually didn't read the report till December. I didn't even read the report. Okay, but did you get a copy of it, or it was on an email? Yeah, but I didn't read it because it was talking about. Uh, possibilities of rehabbing downtown buildings or something, and it, it didn't talk about demos of dangerous buildings falling down, so it didn't spark my interest, and then I forget what did. When I finally read the report, we discussed it, and we decided to enter the building. So you just Pretty decided- Pretty innocently, everything just- Decided that this was not sufficient, and we would take it well, a step Well, he further. said in the report he hadn't entered the building, so we thought it might be a good idea to do so. Right, and and what, on what date did your Inspectors go in I th sometime in December? Yeah. Then if, based on the letter you read, and based on the observations of your inspectors, mm -hmm. why would you let that building stand through the coming winter months, not knowing whether we were going to have horrendous snowstorms that could compromise that structure, not knowing what type of weather we would have? Why would you sit back and let that structure remain, and it's only in March coincidentally when some of us started asking questions that we put out an RFP. No, that's not true, Councillor. I sent the mayor a notice on January 3rd, 3rd that the building had to come down. But you would agree nothing happened from January 3rd until March. Yes, it did. We went out for a procurement process to try to get a figure that I could come to council with to ask for the money because I don't have that kind of money in my budget to but, take but the that building was, down. But that was, according to the documentation, that was done in March. According to the documentation, and I have a copy of it from Mr. Morris. I don't know what you're that, looking for, Counselor. I acted as expediently I, I'm as I could. I'm asking why the delay. If it was that serious. There was no serious. delay. That's well, what it took for the procurement process. I had a meeting. I asked for a meeting after I notified the mayor. I think it was after. I asked for a meeting with Jay Condon and Mike Morris and Jim Plouffe so we could decide how to proceed. And we agreed that it would be impossible to come to council if we didn't have a figure, so we decided to put it through a procurement process, and when we got that price, we came here. Well, I, let I me mean, just say I'm pretty familiar with the procurement process, and if you have an emergency, you can actually ask for a waiver. Is that not true? I can ask for a waiver from the state from procurement. Right. Correct. I would still have to come here for the money, council. Right, but if you had the waiver, you would have been able to come in in January or February. Yeah. Okay, yep. but we didn't do that. Well, when you become the commissioner, you can do it your way. This is the way I chose, Councilor. Well, you know, I, I, just, I don't... I'm doing the best I can do. I, I understand I have 560 that. vacant buildings. I have permitting. I have zoning. I have inspections. I do all kinds of things all day. This is one building I deal with. Just one. This is one building. This isn't the only thing that the building department does all day long. Well, it's one building, Councillor. The, and the, if you decide if the council's wisdom is that this building should remain, then I'll live with that. I'll just put the fence around it and we'll see where it goes. I mean, I can't make the council spend the money and I can't take the building down without the money. Yeah, but once I put the I, fence up, I'll be I able to sleep at night. The there's been quite a few nights that I haven't on this. The difference is we're in a political position for right or wrong, and we have to respond to people who either call us or see us on the streets and see us as we go around the city and ask us questions. And that's why many times we ask questions of you and other department heads. It's not to give you a hard time. It's because people demand that we answer their questions. Correct. And there'll Thank be you, more Mr. questions Chairman. coming when the fence goes up. I'm sure the They're will. not going to stop coming. I'm sure the will. Council, you done? Yes, thank you. Council Lally, you have a follow-up? Yes. Uh, I wanted to, to touch upon uh, where the money was coming from, just for the record, uh, for the, you know, the folks at home or anyone who might have a question. Uh, this money would not have gone to... Uh, to, to anything else it's not it's not keeping an officer off the street it's not taking 
you know, it's not taking a teacher out of a classroom. Uh, this this uh, money in particular was was uh, from you know no no department that was that was uh, you know lost a lot of people. Um, you know, in this in this budget, I, I had a question for a solicitor Nizrala. Yes, sir. Uh, in in your opinion, in uh, in what we did last year, uh, is is there a way is there a way around the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar restriction? Were we you know were we were we talking about that right? What's uh, what what are your thoughts? My opinion on the interpretation of that ordinance is that the building department, the city, has a unilateral right to expend monies up to two hundred fifty thousand. I don't agree with some of the statements that have been made that they, the city council is prohibited from expending or authorizing an amount over and above that. So anything above two hundred and fifty thousand is an appropriation. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Point of information, if you refer to the order for the next agenda item, and I quote, expenditures from the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund shall be made on the authority and direction of the Brockton Building Commission, provided that no more than 250000 may be so expended for the fund during fiscal year 2018. That's the exact same verbiage relative to this fiscal year, Council. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other follow-ups? Entertain a motion then, Council. Mr. Chairman. Council Cruz. I make a motion to approve. And with the request favorable back to the favorable council. back to the council, would the request that you get an opinion from our legal counsel before the final council meeting on the interpretation of that? I would second that. There's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council with a, a condition precedent on that motion relative to having Attorney Gilday or his successor give us a legislative legal opinion relative to the ordinance. The form of a motion. Yes, that was a motion. All yeah. in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to do a roll call vote on this by order of the chair. <coughs> Those that are in favor, please <coughs> state favor. Those opposed, please say unfavorable. Shirley Azak. Favorable. Shana Barnes. Favorable. Ian Beauregard. Unfavorable. Mm. Timothy Cruz. Favorable. Dennis Ianeri. Unfavorable. Winter Farwell? Unfavorable. John Lally? Favorable. Tom Monahan? Favorable. Moses Rodriguez? Favorable. Paul Studensky? Favorable. Robert Sullivan? Unfavorable. So it's a seven to four, favorable, unfavorable. So now before it becomes a, is, uh, a motion is made, favorable recommendation for the full council. All in favor of sending it back favorable, raise your hand. It would be the seven people that just stated it. All opposed to unfavorable sending it back. It carries. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council with the condition precedent attached as stated by Mr. Cruz. We're going to go on to agenda item 15, please. Order that pursuant to the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, the City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 for the sole purpose of funding the creation and maintenance of the abandoned building registry, as well as the closing and boarding up of vacant and abandoned buildings, provided that no more than 250000 may be expended for the fund during fiscal year 2018. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, James Casseri, Superintendent, Public Property. Say good evening. Hello, Councilors. I'll even move this favorable, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Second. Second. Mr. Fowler, you surprised me. A favorable recommendation has been made. It's been properly seconded. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. If you're opposed, it carries. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Madam Clerk, number 16, please. Order that the City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for the fiscal year 2018 for the sole purpose of helping to fund the cost in connection with the demolition of buildings in the City of Brockton. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, James Cassiri, Superintendent, Public Property. Mr. Cassiri, good evening. Motion recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion. On the motion, um, Council Bonds. Aren't these dueling orders? Oh, no, I get it. Okay. Nope, never mind. Sorry. I resend that. Thank you. Oh, there was a motion made. It was properly. Mr. Cruz, you made the motion. Yes. Who seconded it? Yes, seconded I seconded it. it. Councilor Isaac, second. Motion made. Properly seconded. Favor of recordation. Back to the council. All in favor? 
All opposed, motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to full council. <laughs> thank you on that. Uh, we're going to number five. Thank you. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Kassiri. If you could read it, and then the chair has to make a statement, and the chair is going to ask for a motion at that time. Order appropriation of 250000 from the personal services other than overtime to the police personal services overtime. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief, Brockton Police Department. Guys, as you recall, um, we, uh, under suspension of the rules, we acted upon the 250000 appropriation relative to overtime when, when the chief was here last week. Why this is on the agenda, and, and Mr. Condon uh, sent an email to concur with this, is that this was a previous order. It's a moot point now, so we need to entertain a motion. Make a motion to table. table. Second. 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 Motion made, properly second. Uh, all in favor of tabling? It's tabled. All opposed? It's tabled. Number six, please. Order appropriation of 28566 from the personal services overtime <coughs> 3500 personal services part time 12000 and parking authority reserves 13066 to the ordinary maintenance services electricity of 3500 and snow removal of $25,066 invited honorable mayor bill carpenter john a condon chief financial officer robert malley executive director parking authority good evening miss malley good evening how are you, you. Thanks for being here. My phone's quacking. I know, I heard the quack. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Flanagan, anybody want to talk to him? <laughs> That's Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Yep. <laughs> On the motion, though, Mr. Malley, do you have anything to offer before we No, it's it just uh, paying off the snow, uh, snow plowing bills for the end of the winter. Motion made properly, second in favor of recommendation. <coughs> Council, all in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Favor of recommendation. Tell Mr. Flanagan we said hi. <laughs> <laughs> What are your ringtone like that? <laughs> you quack me up. Madam Clerk, uh, number, number seven, please. Order appropriation of $21,299.30 from the ambulance receipts to the fire department other contract services in order to dispatch fire and EMS responders from the fire stations and contracted ambulance sites. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief, Chief Financial Officer, Michael Williams, Chief, Brockton Fire Department. Chief, good evening. Good evening, Council. Thanks for being here tonight. You're welcome. Move favorable. Second. 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 Chief, do you have anything to say before we vote? Yeah, please no, say something. There, there was a breakdown of this 21,000. It was um, for two units for Brewster Ambulance stations on North Montello Street and Perkins Avenue. And the, the other part of this was for my dispatch office for the 911 licenses. Thanks, Chief. Motion's been made. It's been properly second. Favor of recommendation back to the council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Favor of recommendation back to the full council. I'm going to go to number eight, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 75000 from the Treasurer's debt interest short-term notes to the Treasurer's Medicare tax in order to cover the expected shortfall due to budget cuts and unanticipated overtime through the remainder of the fiscal year. Invited on by Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Martin Brophy, Treasurer Collector. Mr. Brophy, good evening. Evening, Councilors. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Anything you want to say? Um, this is basically in the Treasurer's budget is the city's portion of Medicare tax. And just need to move a little money in to make sure we have enough in the line items. I cover the bill. Motion to recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion made properly. Second. Favor of recommendation back to council. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thanks, Mr. Brophy. Favor of recommendation back to full council. Madam Clerk, number nine, please. Order a transfer of 8000 to the Board of Health Personal Services other than overtime to the Board of Health Purchase of Services. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Louis Tataglia, Jr., Executive Director, Board of Health. To Tagley, good evening. Good evening. Thanks, for, thanks for being here tonight. Motion to recommend favorably. Uh, on, the, on the motion, can we just figure out exactly what he's purchasing? On the motion, correct. Yeah, please. Mr. Tataglia. Yes. First of all, thank you. I didn't see you sitting back there. You're very patient. Thank you. Okay. Um, could you just explain to Mr. Rodriguez what this is about? Yeah, it's to fund two part-time uh, contract nurses that we've had. <coughs> um, for the remainder uh, of the fourth quarter of FY20107, plus a few other um, contractual agreements um, that are in the union contracts. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's a motion on the floor. It was properly second in favor of recommendation back to council. All in favor, please raise your hand. I'll oppose that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Tetegli. Thank you, councilors. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. Madam Clerk, we're going to go on to number number 10. Okay. 
Order that the sum of two million is appropriated to pay costs of developing a parking garage and for Macon Street and traffic improvements within the development district approved by the city in being undertaken in conjunction with Trinity Financial, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under pursuant and pursuant to the Mass General Law, Chapter 40Q, the District Improvement Financing Statute, the Mass General Law, Chapter 44, and or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city, although such bonds or notes shall be payable in the first instance from property tax revenue expected to be derived from the new development and within the development district. The amount authorized to be borrowed pursuant to this order shall be expended in addition to all amounts received by the city from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and from Trinity Financial to pay costs of the project. Ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts fin Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws in any and all bonds or notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Martin Brophy, Treasurer, Collector, and Robert Malley, Executive Director, Pocket. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Good evening. This is the time I should have my phone quack. Everybody quack laughs and exactly. you just give me what I want, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the, this, is, um, this is the gap financing. Uh, the state is prepared to give us a $10 million grant for the garage uh, to be built on the Trinity property. Uh, and then turn the garage over to the city uh, to be run by the parking authority for a dollar. Right. There's uh, 10 million from the um, from the state, 500,000 from Trinity, and we're looking for two million dollars from the city. The uh, diff money created by phase two of the Trinity project is more than enough money, according to the assessor, more than enough money to pay the bond on this on this uh, garage. It, you're looking at a diff of $190,000, uh, according to the CFO. The uh, payment will not exceed $165,000. So we're actually making money on this thing. We desperately need a garage in the north end of uh, the downtown. Right? There are people already walking way too far uh, to work, uh, and it's held up expansion of uh, W.B. Mason, um, the um, Neighborhood Health Center, uh, the DUA. They're all looking for parking. Right. There's other projects uh, in the area that, that uh, are stuffed uh, because there's no available parking within walking distance. Um, we have a proposal for 93 Center Street, uh, 19 Main Street the city is trying to market. Right. Um, we're in, in desperate need of this housing. We, ha we did a parking study. The parking study is uh, uh, completed by Nelson Nygaard. It's online. Right. And it states that without this garage, we will have a 40 percent shortage uh, of parking in, in the north end of the downtown. Um, so what we're asking for is approval uh, for bonding um, in order to get the $2 million. We can't get the grant from the state until the city makes the commitment for our share of the, of the project. And I'll take any questions that I'm allowed to answer. And if I can call a lifeline if I need one. Lifeline. <laughs> Council's a point of information. I was at the State House today. And, uh, I did, I did meet with Mr. Brady, uh, Ms. Cronin, and Mr. Cassidy, and I did see him again at Brock and High tonight. They just wanted to go on record, and I know our former colleague, Ms. Dubois, wants to go on record. The entire state delegation supports this, so if we could note that into the minutes, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. Um, Councilor Azak, followed by Councilor Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Malley. Um, I'm in total support of this garage because, as you just said, a lot of development downtown relies on this. I'm, I sit on the traffic commission. I go to a lot of the zoning board meetings and a lot of new developers. Most of the time when they come in um, and they get denied, it's because of parking. So we're really in dire need of this. So I, I'm totally in favor of it. Um, but what I would like is possibly you could ask for one of your lifelines, Mr. Condon, to explain <laughs> uh, our... Um, the bonding process. I think there's a lot of misconception of people, but you know, with the two million dollars, it's a large number, and people have a misconception of how the bonding process works. So, if you could please tell us. 
Well, uh, basically the council will authorize the city to spend $2 million and to borrow the proceeds of that $2 million. The borrowing will be paid back over 20 years. Uh, it's a general obligation borrowing, which means it relies on the ability of the city to levy property taxes. It's not restricted to the parking authority's revenues, but a general obligation bond. That means we'll get a better interest rate by issuing it in that fashion. And the order also provides that the first source of repayment of the bond as the payments come due each year. Uh, will be the property taxes that are involved in the diff zone from the creation of the project. So uh, basically new tax money will pay for the borrowing cost as Bob indicated. Uh, that's anticipated to be more by a few thousand dollars annually than the cost of servicing the debt. Uh, you know, $2 million over 20 years plus the interest cost. So that's basically how it works. 20 year borrowing, $2 million approved by the city council. And first source of payment is the property taxes that result from the project. And if those are insufficient, which we don't expect will be the case, then the general property tax revenue comes in. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carden. That's it. Thank you, Council. Council Borgard followed by Council Farwell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, but Mr. Ma Malley, um, he is well aware that we spent a great deal of time reviewing this, and we are looking out for the citizens and for the taxpayers. And this is, I am support of this project. I am very much in support of this project because at present, we already have businesses that need the parking. So even if no businesses came into downtown, which we hope is never the case, then that they, they, they already they need the parking. What we're very excited about too is if I can call a Mr. Jenkins, even though he's not on. Anybody object? Seeing none, Mr. No. Jenkins, thank you. Good evening, Council. Thank you. Good evening. Again. No, I wanted Mr. Mallon to stay up there. What I wanted everyone to understand <laughs> here. Yes. This, this is what, this is what uh, we, again, as I said, um, this was a very involved decision. We went through a, a, a great deal of understanding and background. The, the uh, research that was done prior to all this that said we needed the parking garage. It was evident to many of us who drove around looking for spaces, but it was substantiated. And that again, that information is available. Also, what's substantiated and was brought out is how much revenue the parking authority brings in. It already sustains itself. So that was an ad advantageous to the community in its existence. The one that's currently there, the parking garage at the intersections of Crescent and Main is constantly full. And so again, Mr. Um, Malley has been forced to, you know, how would I say it, find different parking for individuals. Very excited that W.B. Mason is growing. We've also had a great deal of activity. We're brought to Neighborhood Health Center. They're here to stay downtown, which is very encouraging and positive. What we also wanted to emphasize, too, is this program, this is involved with the Broughton Redevelopment Authority and Bob Malley. People that are in Broughton, looking out for Broughton, and we'll see what is going to be transpiring. All this is very transparent to the citizens of this city. So I want everyone to understand that. I was also, I would like to point out that apparently these individuals have a great deal of support, as uh, we saw here. And what was rather exciting here was seeing all these different companies that are supporting this. And I'm hoping that some of these companies uh, decide to move downtown that are not downtown at present, and those that are hope to grow downtown. So anyway, I, again, hope that my colleagues in, in, in vote favorably for this. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and as I said earlier, we do have a, a lot of, uh, of people here in, in attendance from uh, vast backgrounds in the business. We have financial industry, we have a food industry, uh, universities, we have uh, John Marion, Marion Tuxedos. Um, we do have quite a bit of support here. Uh, so I just want to recognize the people that did come out tonight. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Council. We're going to move on now to Council Farwell, followed by Council Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just very briefly, uh, excellent project. My issue has always been Transparency, I think Robert knows that. I've talked to the board about it. Mr. Malley, I know you will do an exceptional job with that garage once it's built. Um, your track record speaks for itself. When we adopted our urban renewal plan, uh, colleagues, we, we actually said we were acting by and through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority in accordance with the powers granted by Chapter 121B, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a, a short amendment 
to the order, which I will read. It doesn't change anything materially, but it puts the Brockton Redevelopment Authority in the mix on this project, which is where I think they should be. This is the first major project that's going to unfold within the downtown urban renewal project. And frankly, if we don't include them and they don't have a role to play, I, I believe we've effectively neutered their, their capability to be involved. So I will, I will read this and then I will uh, provide the clerk with a copy. And this would be inserted at the very end of the order where it closes out the Commonwealth, Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require, and we would insert if this is approved. Ordered further, pursuant to the downtown urban renewal plan adopted by the City Council in 2016, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, acting by and through its executive director, shall approve all plans, all expenditures of public funds, and shall maintain all records related to the construction of the parking garage project. The, the authority shall ensure compliance with all state and federal laws relating to public construction projects. And I'm just looking at the track record of the BRA, BRA, which has been exceptional in this city, and I'm saying let's have one authority, which we've already mentioned in the downtown urban renewal plan, be the, the steering mechanism for this project. If other people want to be project manager and do whatever they want to do, that's fine. But I think our appointed officials, who are all residents of the city, and the executive director who has shown his commitment to the city, I think this would be a step forward. Uh, and so I would move that this amendment be adopted. Second. Council, I'd, like I'd like to further amend that. I think you have to add the word applicable when you talked about relative to in accordance with state laws and regulations. It has to be applicable. Mr. Chairman, After I'll After the leave. word all, insert applicable, all applicable state and federal laws. Yeah, I can't remember yeah, how you said it when, but you look at it. Councilor Azak. I would, um, on the motion, I'd like to ask Mr. Jenkins a question before voting on the amendment. We're not voting yet. We got stuff to talk about. On the amendment, we're voting on. Not yet. I can it. Absolutely, okay. Council. Mr. Jenkins, I, I, you just heard the amendment, and where do you stand on this? I know you've been involved. I've seen, yes. I see you at all the um, downtown projects with the um, chamber, and you're always there present. But how do you feel taking on this project? Is this something that you that is feel a you can handle? responsibility, as Council Winthrop Farwell has pointed out. That is a responsibility of the redevelopment authority. So I feel fine with it. I think our board feels fine with it. My chairman is here. Uh, Vice chairman is here as well. One thing I also wanted to point out is that there are two other amendments that are or orders that are coming before this council in regards to the $10 million and also the authority are transferring that to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. So So this will all work together and it'll work with it. Yes. Exactly. Okay. This is the first piece so that we can Correct. get the, the agreement with the state Sit. on the grant. Okay, and, um, and this is something that you would be doing. You wouldn't be hiring an outside, anybody else from the outside. This is something that you would be doing yourself from? I think what the council president said is a, as far as applicable, if it comes to construction management, I may be looking at an outside. I've never built a garage, <laughs> okay? I've never built one. Um, we may be looking at hiring a consultant that actually does construction, particularly of a garage in order to make sure, but the final, the final sign off will be my board and myself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Mr. Chairman. I, I, I'm sorry, were you, were you done prior to me recognizing Council Azak? Uh, uh, yes, I, do, you, do you need me to read this again with the word that you've inserted though? Yeah, I think, Just I as think a point so. of information. Sure, or? if you could for the record. Okay, uh, Council, this is how it would read now with, with help from the chair. Ordered further, pursuant to the Downtown Urban Renewal Plan adopted by the City Council in 2016, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, acting by and through its Executive Director, shall approve all plans, all expenditures of public funds, and shall maintain all records related to the construction of the parking garage project. The authority shall ensure compliance with all applicable state and federal laws relating to public construction projects. On, on the amendment, it's been seconded, correct? It has. Uh, I have some questions on the amendment for the amendment. mostly Mr. Jenkins. You have the floor, Council. So I think 
I think the thought process behind the amendment, I understand, and I think it's valid, and I think it may not be the worst thing, but this is basically putting you in as the construction supervisor. And you compliance. Have, and compliance. And also. compliance. Mm -hmm. Correct. What, generally speaking, that would be a fee of probably 5% in most construction, uh, possibly 10%. So we, are we now talking about a $10 million garage that the BR, how are you going to pay for what you need to do? You'll need, if you were to take this over, you'll need attorneys, you'll need construction supervisors, and on a $10 million project, my experience, and I'm in the building industry, is that you'd be needing to take out of this somewhere between one hundred dollars to $200,000 in fees out of this. I think that's, a, that's pretty close if you use your 10 percent, correct. Um, and do you disagree that that's probably the, the industry standard? I would say anywhere from 8 to 10 percent is usually the industry standard, yes. And most of that will probably come out of our budget. Um, not our budget per se, the redevelopment authority, but the budget of the project. Yeah. We do have a budget we're working with and that will be before the council in the next two orders. Uh, We'll have that number. We'll look at that. Um, there are some, they already have the line items plugged in. Uh, some of the numbers are currently plugged in. We'll look at those with Trinity and our partners that are doing this. Trinity, uh, the Redevelopment Authority, the Parking Authority, and the Planning Department will probably play a role as well. I guess my question is, you know, I often, I look for the, uh, the unintended consequences of a, of, of a, so right now we have a $10 million garage. By passing this amendment, Essentially, we have a ten million two hundred thousand dollar garage. Do we have the money for that? Yes. It, well, so I think from my lifeline here, Mr. May, um, a lot of that has been plugged in. Is it's already in, accounted for. Is in, in the, the budget, budget for that now. Correct. So adding this in at the last minute is should not. No. It won't make affect any, the budget. No. We have our numbers. Those are plugged in. Let's see if I can. But. Your numbers pr prior to you being officially a part of this? Correct. Well, officially someone had to clerk this. So that number is in there. That number is in the budget. The legal fees, we knew that the redevelopment authority or some entity in the city were going to need legal costs. That number so this is, is in that's there. my question. So this is built in already and it was really a matter of we're just fine, uh, formalizing Exactly. Work that the planning department and yourself have already have already done. Contemplated. So this should not add to the cost of the project by by approving this amendment. It won't. Not to the total budget of the project. No. Maybe between line items, it may. So that uh, but the total cost is what I'm no. looking at. Okay. Thank you. That's my question. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Council. It's just because of the the importance of this for the future of Brock, and I just want to make sure of dotting the i's, crossing the t's. Council Fowler made a motion. Did Council Lally second? Who seconded that motion? That's Council Monahan. Monahan. Just for the record, if you could state Tom Monahan would too. Thank you. Um, we want to go to uh, Council Monahan, followed by Council Rodriguez. I'm all set. My question has been answered. All right. Council Rodriguez, followed by Council Barnes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a question for you, Mr. Malley. Um, who was um, clerking all of this prior to it being allocated to the BRA? Who was clerking? Mm -hmm. I think we always anticipated that the BRA was going to going to work. We're just formalizing that now. Okay. But Robert's been in this since the beginning. Right, but I'm saying, but it wasn't, that wasn't in the original order, so. Which is, so, so, which is why I agree with the amendment. It's in the second, it's in the second order. That has it's in the second, okay, it's in the second order, the, the next order that's yes. coming, the one on the grant itself. Right, this is just the gap financing. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying, uh, you came in here looking for $2 million appropriation from this body, to basically start the project, but at the time we had no idea who was going to take the the work that the BRA fellow just. Uh, yeah, we, we may not have. Um, I may not have communicated that properly, but it, but it. I mean, this what, what what I'm trying to get to. This wasn't a shocker. No, no, to no, you or anybody else that not just walked we'll in here, right? Robert's been. <laughs> no. No, we've already discussed this. Okay. No, no that we can. No, it was a shocker at all. It was a shocker to the rest of us. That's why I'm just wondering <laughs> whether or not. No, Huh? It was a shocker to me. Oh, I wasn't. <clears throat> it was a shocker to me. So, um, basically, Mr. Malley, if I could um, just ask you a couple questions, one even that I had written down, even you know, before Council Farwell introduced his amendment, it, 
this garage is actually going to be run a little different than the one down the street. Yes, it is. It has to be like a 24-7 type of garage. Uh, that's still being looked at. Yeah, it's going to have to be uh, available for residents to get in and out 24, yes, 24-7. Right. Um, uh, how many positions are you envisioning creating with this new project? Uh, Jobs. Uh, some some full-time, some part-time, but I'm figuring maybe a couple of full-time jobs and, some, and three or four part-time jobs. I, I don't recall exactly, because uh, I, I think I went through uh, one of the presentations that everybody else went to, but I'm not exactly sure uh, what the amount of money that this garage would be generating uh, on a yearly basis. Can you yeah, remind uh, us? Yeah, based on the, based on, well, when I did the, predi uh, the uh, projections for uh, MassWorks, uh, for the... Um, EOHS or EOHD, um, yeah, uh, alphabet soup. The, uh, when I did the projections for them, we figured that the amount of total revenue coming in would be about $350,000 a year once the thing's up and running, okay? And then uh, the total um, amount net would be between $150,000 and $200,000 a year after, after, you know, um, maintenance and uh, employees. And Mr. Condon, why couldn't the revenue generated by the garage pay for its own bond? Because you would pay a higher interest rate. In order for you to issue a revenue bond, you, the, uh, the bond buyers would have to be confident that the revenue projections were accurate. And if they weren't, uh, they would be in a jeopardized position. Whereas with a general obligation bond, the uh, ability of the city to levy taxes is what, is what secures the bond <coughs> and gets you a much more favorable interest rate. So the, but basically this thing is going to be generating money. The only, the only difference is that the, the funds have to come up from someplace else. The, from another, the, the from funds the to repay itself. the bonds are going to come first and foremost from the additional property taxes in the diff zone which we think will be more than the cost of the debt service each year. To the extent that isn't true, it comes from the general property tax levy. That means that whatever revenues come in from the garage authority's operational place are net revenues to the garage, as Bob just said. No, let me ask you another question. And, and I'm, if I have this question, I'm sure a lot of people at home actually have the same question. Um, why wouldn't the, uh, the parking authority reimburse the city for what we are paying? It could. It could. It could. Yes, it okay. does now. It does now for, for the cost of a, of a rehab bond that went in on the, uh, the garage down there. So, the, so this technically could operate the same way? Yes, it could, but that's not part of the, the bond order. The bond order right. simply says, but yes, it right. could. But I'm if saying the city's DIF project is paying for it, you could have the parking authority provide a contribution back to the general fund. Yes. Okay. All right. I just, well, uh, uh, as uh, with my fellow counselors, I, I just want to also go on record that um, I support the project because it makes a lot of sense for the city. It's, uh, as we were discussing here a few seconds ago, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you've got a, uh, an empty lot basically sitting there on uh, Petronelli Way. If you can put a nice structure in the middle of the city, you know, good for us. You know, so I, I hope that we, um, we uh, <coughs> vote favorably on this um, because I'm going to do that. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Council. Council Bonds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, so if, if you just allow me just a little bit of leeway, I, I won't, I, very little, I promise. Um, so as Council Rodriguez just said, you know, uh, and actually as the, the order reads, it's a 20-year bond. Um, the city traditionally goes into 20-year contracts and usually, or from what I've seen, year seven to maybe 13, all of a sudden things go bad. Um, so, and you know, with, with this being a good idea, and I agree, at this particular time, it's a good idea. However, Aquaria was a good idea seven or eight years ago as well. So, um, my concern, and even kind of bringing up some of the things that Councillor uh, Farrell said in the 47 West Elm Street discussion, <laughs> bringing back or kind of, you know, having a, a chief, um, uh, and, and what am I thinking of? Um, a cornerstone document that we're looking at here that's kind of been brought up a few times is the, the redevelop I mean the urban renewal district and then determining that one of the buildings that originally was included in that document as a possible revenue source that we're seeing now is not as much or in how I interpret the conversation we just had is not as much of a revenue source as may have earlier been interpreted if those kind of continue to keep happening with the buildings that are identified in the report how can the, the, revenue ge the revenue generation stream, like you said, the, tax, the revenue levy, how can we be certain that we can make that money based off the diff 
income if we're taking kind of properties out that were originally included to make that diff kind of bottom line? Well, that's additional growth from that particular zone up there. It doesn't have anything to do with 47 West Elm Street property. That's no, no, I, I know it's not. I know the two properties are well, different, the but I'm just saying. Is, the answer to your question is it's a projection. It's an estimate based on what the assessors think will be the higher assessed values of those properties once the project is completed, and those higher assessed values will generate new revenues. If they don't, then the property tax pays the bill. That, that's why it's a general obligation bond. So the answer to your question is the assessors think that it's going to generate nearly $200,000 more in additional property tax revenue, not the revenue from the garage lot operations, property tax revenue, which is in excess of the annual expected debt service. If that additional revenue doesn't materialize, then the tax levy will pay for the bond ob obligation. You still have the ability, not through the borrowing authorization, but through internal accounting mechanics, to extract from the parking authority garage operations some contribution toward that bond cost. So I, th I think it covered two ways. Some contribution to the cost. Well, the, I'm saying that the property tax is what's anticipated to pay for it. You can accept the projections or you can reject them. I, I don't have any control over what you're thinking, but I think the projections are pretty good. The assessors have put their name behind it. And if this, the projections are not sufficient, then the property tax revenue will have to pay for it. That's a couple hundred thousand dollars a year under $130 million tax levy. It's not a significant piece of it, but it would have some impact if there is no contribution from the diff zone improvement, none. <laughs> If there is no contribution from the diff zone improvement, mm -hmm. the operation of the garage will be generating some revenue, and I don't know how much it will be. I don't know how much it will be left after they take care of their maintenance and their operations, but mm -hmm. it sounds as though almost enough just on that alone to pay the anticipated bond costs. So I think you covered two ways. Okay, and that's, that's your professional opinion? Yes. Okay, and that's not one of the, the conditional um, kind no of condition on the statements state. that you put in the, on the, some of the orders? The, if you, the letter's in your packet and there's no condition on it. Okay, all right. Um, and another thing, so how many spaces again is this going to be? I forget. Four, it's 414. 414 additional spaces. How many are in the structure that's right, that people use now? 442 this? over here. Oh, okay. It's pretty much the same size. Oh, okay, so we're dub doubling at least our, our Struct structure, parking, parking. Capacity, okay, right. all right, and um, uh, what was my other question? Oh, this also, this project is the one that also comes with the through street construction, correct? Yes. Okay, all right, and um, I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out, so which will be done first, the, not the street, the, will the street be, street, be done first? The street is last. Street is last. Street is last right? Okay. Because right. we need the garage open before we can put a street through two parking lots that exist now. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. I think that's it for now. Thank you, Thank Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Fons. Any other council questions? We're going to do some parliamentary procedure now. There's a motion on the floor by Mr. Fowler. It was seconded by Mr. Monaghan relative to the amendment. All in favor of the amendment as stated. All opposed. The amendment carries. Now I entertain a motion to favor motion recommendation to recommend favor, as please. amended. Second. As amended. <laughs> a motion was made, uh, properly second, a favor recommendation uh, as amended. Back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries. Favor recommendation, Madam Clerk, as amended. Back to the full council. Thank Mr. you very Chairman. much. Thank you. Council. I just have a quick comment. We see Mr. Jenkin mentioned the. Um, collaboration and partnership with Trinity Financial. I don't know if anybody's here from Trinity Financial, but I would like to publicly thank them <laughs> for staying in Brockton. And um, they turned a beautiful, um, they turned, made something really beautiful, an empty abandoned parking lot. So I'd just like to recognize that. Um, I know that they're, they've been very involved in this, so I just wanted to recognize them. I'll be happy them. to pass that along to thank them. Thank you. you. Is anybody here from Trinity? No. no. Council is going to take a two minute recess. All right. Hey, Robert.
Councilors, we're back in the Finance Committee. We're going to go, we have, I believe, two more agenda items left, or three. We're going to go to a number 11, Madam Clerk. Order, any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this order in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Move favorable. Second. 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 <laughs> motion on the floor, favorable recommendation back to council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Before we go on to number 12, councilors, uh, just uh, just quick information relative to number 10 that we just voted on favorable as amended. Uh, the treasurer of the city, uh, Mr. Mr. Brophy, did, did just come up to you. He needs to just check with bond council, which is appropriate to do relative to the verbiage on that. Um, and he's going to do that, and, and we'll hear back one way or the other. Okay, okay councilors, we're going to go on to number 12, please. Order that, <laughs> order that pursuant to the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, the City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 for the parking violation fines up to and including the amount of 250, I'm sorry, I missed a line, for the reauthorization of the parking authority revolving fund to receive revenues from the parking violation <coughs> fines up to and including the amount of 250,000. Invited John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Robert Malley, Executive Director, Parking Authority. Mr. Malley, good evening. Right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Somewhat related to this. <laughs> Run out there and corral the mayor and tell them when they rip down 47 West Elm Street, you want to put an open air parking lot there to take care of the overflow. <laughs> and, the and that'll make this agenda item worthwhile in, in case there are any violations. <laughs> uh, I would recommend favorably. Second. So, <laughs> motion made, property second. Favorable recommendation back to the council. All in favor? All opposed, Thank that you. motion carries. Thank you. Bobby. Yes. Yes. Next item, Madam Clark. 13. Order that the pursuant to the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, the City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 from the cash receipts from Comcast, such expenditures not to exceed 750000 invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening, Councilors. This is a reauthorization of the Comcast revolving fund, but I just want to make a point. Uh, the summary doesn't include that this isn't supposed to be in excess of $675,000. The first $675,000 is appropriated to the mayor's budget every year. So it should read, cash receipts from Comcast in excess of $675,000. I don't know if the actual order reads that, and the summary just omitted it. I think the if, uh, it, if it does, we're all set. No. The actual order. Um, no. Excuse me. In excess, mine mine has it. Yeah. Uh, so it's in there. It does. Yeah. Where do you guys see? Comcast franchise fees in excess of six hundred seventy-five thousand pursuant to the new cable license contract. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hundreds of firms shall not exceed seven hundred fifty thousand during the fiscal year okay. twenty eighteen. So if the 675 is mentioned in there? It is yes. mentioned, yes. Okay, then I think yeah. we're all set. It mentions right, re revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 from the cash receipts from Comcast franchise fees in excess of 675000 pursuant to the new cable license contract, and that further that the expenditures from this fund shall not exceed 750000 during the fiscal year 2018. Some expenditures to be limited to the cable-related activities during fiscal year 2018. So it's the, it is there. Mr. Correct. Chair, thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Council Cruz. Thank you. Before we make a motion to, ex to recommend this favorably, and I'll bring this up at, when we get the mayor's budget, <coughs> please go back to the mayor and tell him that we are going to request strongly that whatever amount of money needs to be used to make the chamber, the council chamber of television, clear, good sound, and work every meeting has to be spent out of this budget this year to work with our city clerk. It's, it's terrible that we, even when we're on live, you can barely see what, what we look like and what we're I, talking I, about. I concur with that, Councilor. I think it's a problem. That 675000 in the mayor's budget is intended to go to the community cable organization, and they ought to be spending it on that purpose. And right. we, can, uh -huh. we, can, we can make certain that in his <coughs> uh, grant each quarter to them, there's that restriction. There's, we need to spend whatever we need to do to get this yeah. up, to, uh, up to snuff here. So. Agreed. Thank both, you. That's both just have a, to come together. Agreed. Right. It, it has to be the mayor and, and cable and city clerk. The only working hand to exactly. To, and, it, uh, and it's time as a chief. Uh, as, as I I watch some towns. Yeah.
ca uh, their cable and it's clear and concise and ours looks like a TV that I had back in 1958. Mm -hmm. Which I was only two years old. I was Howdy Judy on that TV. Motion to recommend favor. On the on the motion, Councilor Rodriguez. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Condon, I don't know if you recall, but when this cable contract was negotiated with Comcast, I was part of the Harrington administration, and I was actually the liaison with Comcast to to deal with with the cable contract, and the six hundred fifty thousand dollars was not designed for um, cable augmentation. The $650,000 or up to $650,000 was to pay Brockton community access to produce Brockton access programming. Correct. The balance of the difference in monies were supposed to be used for the upkeep of the system, not necessarily from the, from the BCA. And I, I think this order, though, too, needs to, um, when this contract was, was first negotiated, it was a percentage. It wasn't a dollar sign. It was 4%. Four cent, four Correct. So that 4% could be you know, $500,000 or it could be a million dollars. Correct. So what happens, what's been happening with the balance of the there's funds? Over, there's over a million dollars in the revolving fund. So I think what basically what Council Cruz is saying that we ought to utilize the money that's in the account itself to fix what we have to fix I, in this I don't chamber. Dispute, to get that I don't out. dispute that, Councillor. The way it's structured is the first six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, as opposed to six hundred and fifty when when you were in the mayor's office, because the revenues have grown a bit. Correct. The first six hundred and seventy-five thousand goes to the Brockton Community Cable Corporation for their for their purposes. The revolving funds' purpose is to take care of these kinds of needs you know taking care of the broadcast right. so basically the way the way the the uh, contract was awarded it was the um, that up to 75 percent of the total uh, revenue yearly revenue was to go to bca and the other 25 percent was supposed to be used for the maintenance of the equipment here as well as the schools <laughs> yeah. both uh, the brockton public schools and massasoit yeah, and they've Massasoit over the years has gotten some of this money too. Okay, so I just want to make sure that it's clear to everybody that it's not necessarily a dollar sign, but a percentage. So it's the four percent, then seventy-five percent of that four percent, and twenty-five percent of the four percent, whatever whatever that amount comes out to, because it's not necessarily a dollar sign. No, but I have the the budget has an appropriation for the cable group, so that they know they've got an operating budget. If it comes out to less than 75%, they can come back to us for the for the balance, as you just said. Yep. But I've got to have an appropriation amount. This revolving fund is for the excess of that appropriation amount. When you see the mayor's budget, you'll see the 675 is already accounted for in that budget. Going directly to BCA. Going to the mayor's office as an appropriation to be given to the BCA, yes. Given to BCA. Yes. And then the balance stays on that, on that revolving fund. It was in that revolving fund. And at the moment, I think there's about 1.4 million in it. Okay. And so that this would restrict uh, the mayor's ability to tap into that fund to 750000 without coming back to the city council. Yeah. I don't think you want to give them an open, open checkbook. No, we don't. Yeah. No, we don't. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council. On the motion, Council Razak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my, one of my questions was answered, but I wanted to reiterate what um, Councilor Cruz was saying. You could notice the difference in quality when we had our meetings at the... Um, at the high school, at the little theater, I have, I watched them, and I'm like, wow, the picture is so much clearer and better than when uh, we we get taped here. So we definitely need to work on that. So thank you, but um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any anyone else on the on the motion? Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Item number. Oh, we're all done. That's it. Well done. done. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Mr. Conan, Mr. Co Mr. Conan, if I if I if I could, um, it, relative to the school budget books, I, I, I know they're in the queue. They're ready to be, I think, finalized. But the mayor had made a promise that we would get the budget um, books by this coming Friday. We got them early from the city side. But could you could you just? I, I will, Councillor. In fact, they may actually have been ready. Okay. Uh, I just focused on getting your books. Aldo said 
He didn't want to have the city books coming in in advance of the school books because he didn't want to be out of sync. Yep. And I neglected to call him today, so okay. I think they're probably ready. We'll have them delivered to you, if not tomorrow, then the, then the day after. So okay. you've got them okay. before Friday. One other question, Councillor. It seems to me we haven't put the budget order in yet, the actual legal budget. So you've got a special city council meeting for hearing starting next Wednesday, I think. Is that correct? We uh, Wednesday the 7th. Thursday the 8th and Friday the 9th. So um, this is just a question for your opinion. Do you think it would be inappropriate to have the budget order received, uh, the actual legal budget received at one of those meetings? You can be debating the budget books because you've already got them. Typically, and that, that saves you from having to come in for receiving it. That's my question. I mean, typically we've always gotten it before, Jay. Um, I'll, I'll defer to, the, to my colleagues. Uh, I find it helpful, 12 years on the council, to have it prior to. Uh, because that's really the, the, the meat of the whole budget. That's right. Um, it, is, it a, is it possible to get a prior to? Well, point of, point of inquiry, parliamentary inquiry, I think what he's asking, theoretically it would have to be a, a council order, it would have to be at a yes. council meeting, which we don't have. We would, we would have to have a special meeting Monday night just to file that or operate on it. Yeah, actually, we will have to have we'll a special. Have to because we're not. We're not we listening. can't vote on it otherwise. Right. right. So we'll have to have a special council meeting Monday evening. To receive the legal budget? To receive the budget. Uh, actually, I apologize. I'm thinking a lot here. We'll have to have a Tuesday because you would have had to have the order in by noontime <coughs> yeah. today. You'll have to have the order in by noontime tomorrow and then call a special meeting for, for Tuesday evening, can which can Wednesday? be a 10 minute. Can we do it on Wednesday? Well, we could do it Wednesday. The Wednesday prior to, starts at prior 6.30. To, prior to. We could have a 6 o'clock special it, meeting. We could have it at 6 o'clock. Would that be the only agenda? Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. If, if you're already coming in on Wednesday, if we have a special meeting in advance of all of that, you've got the budget books. The, the budget order itself is, is it's the legal document, but it, it's got to be taken by a city council meeting. We couldn't technically be discussing it until we have it. So we would have to get it Wednesday evening at 6 as a special meeting and refer it to finance. Uh, actually, that may not work either. I'm thinking out loud. You may want to talk to the city clerk tomorrow morning because it then wouldn't be able to be an agenda item. We'll, so, we'll, so the we'll worst talk. case, we'll have a special meeting next week to get it in your hands. Correct. It, but you need to talk to the clerk, I think, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, because if we did it Wednesday evening, it would not be able to be an agenda item Wednesday night. We'll talk to, the, I'll yeah. talk to the clerk in the morning. We'll get back to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank That's you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Councilor, um, as of right now, okay, I mean, it could change, and, and I'll notify you. As of now, we'll just we'll be here again next Wednesday, next Thursday, next Friday, 6.30 p.m. It starts, okay, here in the chamber, and then we'll be back the following Monday, okay? Council. Uh, oh, I I just want to know, if you're done with that, I just want to make an announcement really quickly that, to rescind an announcement I made last week, but only if we're done with yep. the scheduling of this. Okay, and so can I have a moment of um, personal privilege? Yes. Um, I know I announced last week that the Women's Commission, there was going to be a swearing-in ceremony. Unfortunately, due to uh, the scheduling of the budget and just some other kinds of things going on and the, some of the people that, the department heads that wanted to attend that hearing can't be in two places at one time. So uh, we have decided to postpone that until probably the first Wednesday in July. Uh, but there'll be an update on that. The mayor's office will release um, the, press, the press release and there'll be some more information. But anyone planning to have come here for the swearing in of the 10 women, um, that has been postponed. Thank you. And Council, just point of information, does, um, does it still look like Congressman Lynch will be joining us Friday, next Friday? We're still working on that. Okay. Yeah, it's not confirmed. Um, he, he is aware of it. Um, it's not confirmed, but we, I'm working with the scheduler, chief of staff, and my director to see if we can work it out in his schedule. Um, okay. Just nothing confirmed. Great. Thank you. Anything else before us? Council Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, could I have a moment of personal yes, privilege, Council. please? Just like to take a moment uh, to wish my sister Peggy a happy birthday uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow. I won't say what year, but hey, thank you. How old? I won't say. <laughs> 30. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any, anything else before us? Seeing none, we're adjourned. I know I liked her. She's a Gemini. <laughs>